president of the Teachers Association in Prince George's County. And we're all standing here together today, parents, educators, local school officials, and urging Governor Hogan to, uh, to act on the budget that was put forth to him by the General Assembly and to uh, ensure the social justice for children that's uh, active in Article 8 of the Constitution and the Thornton Commission funding formulas. Uh, we're joined here today by Dr. Thornton, who will speak next, and followed by Senator Doug Peters, and it may be Delegate Proctor today, and the CEO of the Prince George's County Public Schools. Uh, we're also joined by our labor partners uh, from SEIU, Wanda Twig, and uh, Cynthia Collins, from the ASASP, the, the Principals Union, Doris Reed, the Executive Director, and from SEIU, the President, uh, William Selman. So up next, I, my job is to pass the mic to Dr. Thornton and, and address the issue of the $20 million uh, that is being withheld from the Prince George's County Public Schools to the, I'm looking for my figures, which would mean a result in 97,000 fewer dollars for each school or 3,600 fewer dollars for each classroom and place at risk 354 teachers or 590 support staff positions. Uh, we would, I'd let Dr. Thornton, without further ado. Thank you. I am uh, pleased to be here this morning with my, uh, my colleagues uh, members of our, our General Assembly, educational leaders and union leaders and leaders of our parent community to um, restate uh, the importance of proper and adequate funding for our children. Uh, the Thorn Commission uh, that I had the honor of chairing represents a fundamental consensus uh, about uh, the approach that the people of Maryland want to take to the education of their children. It was a hard won consensus, a broad, deep consensus, reflecting nonpartisanship uh, no race-based differences, geographical differences, county differences about the education of our children. I think the most important statement that we want to make this morning, in addition to the need to fully fund what the General Assembly has indicated should be funded, is the importance of maintaining that consensus and not going back and not artificially dividing us as a people. This is a, there's a three-legged stool here that we're trying to sit on as a people in Maryland to support our babies. And an important part of that stool is the geographic cost of educating index and fully funding the Thornton formula. Any effort motivated by whatever means to pull one of those legs sets the state back and artificially divides us and returns us to days that we don't want to go back to. So we need to fund this now $68 million, which does not in any way burst our, our budget. The General Assembly has acted very responsibly, and I want to thank our leadership for doing that, finding a way to fully fund, to the extent possible, the education formula and to provide for the cost, the extra cost of funding the education of children. You know, it's very interesting that we're facing the situation in Baltimore City. A large part of that situation relates to how we fund the education of those children. So it would be an ironic um, situation if we, if we were to not now fund the education of those children as we are addressing the very systemic and structural issues in Baltimore City. So I would like to call upon the governor uh, to do the right thing here and to fund the, the third leg of the stool upon which we sit with the, the education of our babies. Make it possible for us to not have to draft budgets in the case of our superintendents throughout the state that would result in a compromise of our public education system. Smaller, larger class sizes and inadequate professional development for our teachers. Inadequate support programs for our children. And those who have, uh, and I want to thank the superintendent CEO of our school system, those who have drafted concepts uh, that could move us forward as a school system. This, if this type of cut or inadequate funding will make it very, very difficult for you to do so. So let's do it as we've always done since we passed Thornton. Let's as simple as a community. Uh, let's put politics aside and let's support adequate and equitable, and equitable funding for our children. Senator Peters. First, I want to thank uh, PGCEA for holding this press conference. We need to keep our eye on the prize, and I'm joined by Delegate Proctor, who sits on appropriations, and I sit on budget and tax. So we've seen directly the impact of this situation. So I want to just go back and say, why are we here? 
The reason we're here is because the governor came in and said he wanted to get rid of the structural deficit in one year. And that was after we sat on spending affordability committee with a bipartisan group of elected officials and said, we can do it in two. In fact, if you do it in one, you're going to have to cut some bone. That was what was discussed. The governor came up and said, you know what, I'm going to do it in one year. The quote was, I did in 24 hours what it took you guys to do eight years to do, which, you know, obviously we bristled at, but we knew that there had to be some situation there where education funding was going to be cut. Well, yeah, it was cut. It was cut by $129 billion in the first budget. So, thankfully, the House got the budget next, and they restored the GCEI fund, and the Senate agreed to that. Now, we also are taking a hit here. Prince George's County is taking a hit because we have another $10 million that we did not ask for from net taxable income, which we already agreed to, and we did it for the benefit of the entire state. So here we are, we've got 13 counties in Baltimore City who are going to be suffering here because we haven't put in $68 million. And I agree with my colleagues here that education is the key, education is the future, and education is causing some of the turmoil that we're feeling right now in Baltimore City. So I thank PGCEA for holding this press conference. We have to keep our eye on the prize. And don't forget, GCEI has been funded fully since FY 2010, and we need to continue that. And we also passed a mandate to fund it from 2017 on. Thank you. I'm Delegate James Park, the 27th District. You know, you've heard the facts, you've heard the figures, you've heard the promises. We know all of, all of, all of these things from what we've been exploring in the past. And as a vice chairman of the Appropriations Committee, one of our number one goals, well, we had several goals, but number one on our list of goals was the fact that we were going to fund, fully fund education. We thought we had an agreement with the governor right up until about the last couple of weeks of the session when he got some other ideas. But we did our job. We provided the money, we provided the cuts to other areas so that we could provide the money for education and other things such as the, the um, funding of the salaries for our classified employees, our state employees. But the big thing is we promised our students, we promised our communities that we were going to be passing this GCEI formula every year. We did it in the legislature, now we just have to get the governor to go along with it. And I just want, as a side note, my professional career was spent as an educator in Prince George's County Public Schools, as a teacher and a principal. And I can remember back in the early 80s when we had a drastic cut just like this that we're predicting with this uh, cut in, in, form, in the formula. We lost 500 employees. As a principal there, I lost seven out of my school. We took years to recover from that. I mean, we were hit all over the county in every area. It didn't make any difference whether you were north, central, or south. You got hit with something like that. And to go through that, you know, and I know we've done it in a, in a, uh, recently too, but it is devastating to our children, to our teachers, to have to live through that with all the cuts that we have to make, plus the increased size in, in school in our classes. So please, Governor, I'm asking you, please, release this money, let our students have, our, have their uh, fair share. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone uh, today is as, as great by choice as I am. Uh, I want to begin by thanking my colleagues from MSEA, PGCA, uh, our host, uh, our other labor partners, and the other officials who are, are here today. Uh, I'd also like to uh, express my special gratitude for the men and women of our Prince George's County House and Senate delegation for their outstanding commitment to public education. Their work, often in, as often in the shadows does go, uh, it's unrecognized at times, and, and I want everyone to know that, that we recognize the work that they have done, and we are very appreciative of that. Uh, like many last week, I was troubled by the images and realities coming out of our neighbors in Baltimore City, coming from our neighbors in Baltimore City. 
I, like many others, felt the pain of thousands of young people protesting for a better quality of life and equality under the law. However, lost in the finger pointing and blame casting is the reality that public education still remains for most the only hope for a brighter tomorrow. For most, education is the great equalizer that provides students living in poverty or unstable home conditions the hope of fulfilling their dreams. In Prince George's County Public Schools, where over 62% of our students come from conditions of poverty, we are charged with the task of providing a world-class education for all of our students. That is why I find it immoral and unjustifiable to deny our students critical funding that can assist in preparing them for the competitive world they face. So while we debate whether we as a county will invest what is necessary for students and families, what is not up for debate is the $20 million that currently sits on the governor's desk. What is not up for debate is how $20 million could help cover the 300 teachers, over 300 teachers remaining in their classroom, or give our principals the additional resources needed to ensure that our students are prepared to take the state-mandated park assessments. So I stand today with my colleagues requesting that Governor Hogan not shortchange the hopes and dreams of our students and educators. I believe in the promise of Prince George's County Public Schools, in every child and in every school, and I ask respectfully for the governor to show that he too believes in our children. I ask respectfully the governor to please release the GCEI funds that our colleagues in the General Assembly have provided. Thank you very much.